Welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. This is the brand new Korg Nautilus synthesizer workstation. It was sent to me all the way from Japan and I'm one of the very first people in the world to get to play it. And I hope it survived the journey. As I understand it, this is basically a Korg Kronos, Korg's flagship workstation, but in a much more affordable package. And to do that, Korg have removed a lot of the controls from the front panel, but they tell me that they've added some new features as well that aren't available in the Kronos. In today's video then, we will explore together the features of the Nautilus. We will, of course, compare it to the Kronos, and I'll give you some nice demonstrations of all the new features. We've got a lot of ground to cover, so let's get started. Whilst Woody and Eddie unboxes the synthesizer, voiceover man here will tell you the backstory about how I got this synth. If you're new to this channel, then firstly welcome, thanks for tuning in. And yes, over here I really like to explain to you how and why I get hold of each keyboard and synthesizer that we demonstrate on the channel. One of the very nice product specialists at Korg Japan. He's actually a Spanish gentleman, but he works in Tokyo. How cool is that? Reached out to me with an invitation to a video call to discuss an opportunity. This was way back in August. After signing the non-disclosure agreement, we had the call and then they revealed to me their plans for a new synthesizer. With the same technology as the Cronus, and that was in the final stages of development. They asked me if I would be interested in trying it out, making some videos and sharing it with you on my channel. So this was about the time I was making videos paying tribute to the Triton and I received lots of requests in the comments for me to try out and feature the Kronos. So I knew that my audience would be really interested in this new synthesizer, as I myself was, of course, so I accepted. So as full disclosure then, Korg have sent me this unit completely free of charge, all the way from Japan. I will return it when I'm done, but there is no time frame and I can keep it as long as I want. I'm really happy with that, obviously, so thank you, Korg. I'm also very proud and honoured to be part of the product launch. There are only a few of these going out to select musicians on YouTube, so I'm really pleased to be amongst that number. Also, it's quite a special thing to be one of the first guys to try this out, outside of the people working at Korg. Okay, let me give you a quick tour of the front panel. Starting over here on the left, of course, we have our traditional Korg joystick here. Pitch bend left and right, modulation up, and then usually we get some interesting effect when we pull it down as well. We also have two assignable switch buttons, just like we got on the Triton. These you can configure to affect the sound in various ways. Over here, we have more performance controls. We'll start with the ones down here, perhaps. We have controls to adjust the drum track, switch it on and off, the arpeggios if we want it on and off, and also latch, which will mean that the arpeggios and the drum patterns continue 
playing even if you lift your hand off the keys. Over here then we have the tempo control click, I'm not sure what that is, perhaps a metronome on and off as you're recording things in the sequences. And two buttons to turn off the global effects or the insert effects. Let me give you a demonstration of the arpeggios in action. about these four buttons here we have octave up and down of course we have the all important shift function you can shift and press other buttons to get shortcuts to other features and here we have an audio in on and off up here then we have our real-time performance controls they have a pretty unusual feature that I'll show you in a second otherwise it's pretty standard stuff we have a matrix of controls that we can adjust by pressing the button down here. The first line is your typical synthesizer parameters. Now I'm going to show you the most quirky aspect of this new keyboard. You can actually press these in. And I think the purpose of this is to stop you making accidental changes to the sound during a live performance, perhaps. Now, I'm not sure that that would actually happen because these knobs are quite small, they're not very grippy and a little bit stiff to turn so I don't think we're going to be accidentally making changes to those anyway but perhaps by pushing them in it allows you during a performance to quickly hit the knobs that are most important to you for example the cutoff and the resonance and the other ones you can easily ignore but anyway that's an unusual feature that I've never seen before on a synthesizer. The front panel is of course dominated by this touch screen it's big bright and colorful and it does require just a light touch to navigate through the different modes here. Let's go into the combination mode. It's not apparently multi-touch, so I can't, for example, do two sliders, two faders at the same time, but perfectly good enough for the job, I think. Over here, we have our traditional navigation buttons, a nice jog wheel here there, which we can use to navigate through the presets or navigate around on the parameters on the screen. Plus, minus, increment, decrements, exit, and enter. Just like we always get. Lastly, over here, we have a few nice things. I think a mode button. I'm glad to see that this synthesizer also carries on the Korg tradition with a combi mode and a program mode. We have, of course, a sequencer. We have a set list as well, global parameters, and so on. And you can step through those using this button here or using the touch screen. And then we have six quick access buttons. These are very cool. You can jump directly. It's actually a little bit laggy. We can jump directly to various functions in the keyboard here to avoid you having to do too much menu diving on the screen. And you can configure these as well to jump to whatever feature or function is important to you. That's really cool. The final button is mysteriously entitled page that seems to step you through different pages. Let me share with you my overall first impressions of the build quality of this because that's something that you can't get by reading the spec sheet. I can tell you this thing is put together really nicely with really premium feeling components as well. We've got this lovely thick aluminium front panel. There is some plastic down here and on this part here, the cheeks as well. But the base as well also seems to be a solid thick sheet of aluminium. It's about four or five mil really solidly put together quite a joy to interact with actually and i have to say i love the design the way that they've got this front panel hanging over the side and the bottom panel here wrapping up to meet it like a gap here in the top never seen anything like it it's a work of art it's like a sculpture it's really really brilliant and i applaud the korg designers for doing such a great job here one disadvantage, however, you've got to be very careful when transporting this keyboard because there's absolutely nothing to grip onto. It's rounded here, so as you're carrying it, 
you don't have anything to grip onto and it's a terrifying experience actually I'm sure a lot of guys with slightly slippery sweaty hands are going to be dropping these so be very very careful guys <laughs> feel pretty nice actually. They are a definite step up from the keys on the cross. I'm not sure they're quite as fine as the keys that I recently enjoyed on the Triton, somewhere in between. Certainly a very very quiet key bed if I turn the volume down. That I can tell you is an unusually quiet and silent and non-clacky key bed. It does have a very short travel. And on the 61 and the 73, these are just synth action keys. On the 88, you obviously get weighted actions. But this is pretty nice. And by the way, no aftertouch, according to the preliminary manual that I've read through. Okay, I was just setting this up to do some performances and it occurred to me that I haven't shown you the back panel and some of you might be interested in that. So over on the left, you can't quite see it, but we have a kettle style power lead. So this has an internal power supply. That's really pro and good to see. Over here, we have uh, USB connections. This one, I guess you can use for storage if you want to load samples, songs, that kind of thing into the sequencer. Here we have the two host for connecting this to a computer. MIDI in, out, through, which is good. We have three pedals, damper pedal, which I've got connected here. We have a switch and a pedal, both of those are assignable. We have two inputs, a stereo pair of inputs. I'm now connected to the stereo outs, but we also have individual outs. One, two, three, four, which is also a pretty pro feature. Over here on the right, we have the headphone output on the standard size, what is it, quarter inch socket. Whilst we have it here on the stand, I just want to show you those design elements one more time. So we have an aluminium front panel here that actually hangs over the side here. It's perhaps difficult to do it justice on camera here, but then we have this beautiful silver, a different shade. Top panel is black, this is silver. Again, a really thick piece of aluminium that just curves around. Maybe it's clearer to see on this angle how the lines swoop around like so. And yes, there's our AC power lead. I just noticed this little design element there. Look, there's a little LED in the R of Korg. The killer feature and power of the Kronos lies in its nine different sound engines. I'm happy to see that all of them are here on the Nautilus. Massively sampled German and Italian grand pianos, plus a Japanese upright, whatever brands they might be. On the Nautilus, these have been revoiced and enhanced, actually re-recorded I believe, the details are a bit vague, and even the ambience of the rooms have been recorded. More on this later, and worthy of its own video in the future I think.
This is another sample library combined with Korg's MDS, multi-dimensional synthesis technology, to smooth it all out. In the Nautilus, Korg have added a brand new early Tyne style piano. Guess what that might be? You guessed it, this is our FM engine, as first featured on the legendary Korg Z1. It is compatible with DX7 sound banks. Hmm, that gives me an idea. Korg do have a pedigree in making some excellent clone wheel B3 emulations and I've been wanting to brush up on my organ chops so this is a very welcome and interesting engine that I'm looking forward to working with. This is a more generic analog modeling synth engine did you catch my Korg Triton Moss demonstration, by the way? Well, this is the same model, originally found in the Korg Oasis. More modeling technology to produce the dynamic and expressive sounds that is not really possible with samples. And this is not just for plucked strings, but also clavinets, harpsichord. Well, I guess they are plucked strings. But you also can do bells and ethnic instruments as well. Just listen to this strange patch. This is an emulation of the classic Korg polysynth of the 1980s. Yes, I like that a lot. Particularly interesting to me is the MS-20 analog monosynth emulation, because my father still has one that he bought in 1980. It was the first synthesizer I ever played. So the MS-20 has always got a special place in my heart. Just listen to these filters. Here then is your Rompler PCM sample-based subtractive synthesizer engine. It is derived from the Triton and before that the M1, and we all know then it's going to sound really fantastic. A new addition in the Nautilus is found percussion. More about that later. Also, there are many new samples and banks to bring the voicing up to date. This is like getting nine new synthesizers in one, and I for one can't wait to try them out and share some demonstrations with you. So I will cover all of these in more depth in separate videos. By the way, we also get wave sequencing along the lines of the wave station and wave state. Yeah, I do like the sound of that. You know, I'm a big wave station fan. <laughs>
Let me demonstrate for you some of the key new features. There is a updated version of the piano engine. Korg have, I think, re-recorded some of the pianos in a new space and captured the room ambience that you can mix into the sound. That's going to be the topic of a separate video for today. Let me just play you three or four of the new pianos. Here's an example of one of the new prepared pianos where they've adjusted a piano by putting something in between the strings and the hammers. It sounds pretty gorgeous. Take a listen. There's also a brand new sampled electric piano, an early time piano. I think it's a Rhodes. Take a listen. Then we have this interesting category of new samples that Korg are calling found percussion. Here's some peculiar sampled kitchen objects.
And here's the rather beautiful sound of a pipe being swung around your head. It gives a lovely sing-song type pad. And just check out the beautiful sub bass. Robert, a friend of the channel who very kindly lent me his Triton, also has a Kronos and he's shared with me some specifications and these photos that I'll be showing you. Inevitably, you, like I, are probably wondering what's the difference between the Kronos and this new Nautilus? Let me share with you then what I know. It's all a bit sketchy and it's based on information directly from the Korg reps and my interpretation of the Korg product concept sheet that was sent out to demo guys and retailers and distributors. So the Kronos is not going away anytime soon. So you will be able to choose between the two models going forward, depending on your budget and requirements. Here's what you get then if you pay the extra money for the Kronos. The biggest difference is the control panel and performance controllers. Of course, there's a better keyboard. You'll get aftertouch. There's a ribbon touch strip controller. The screen is actually bigger on the Kronos, 20 centimeters diagonal versus 18 centimeters on the Nautilus. You get loads of faders and a large number of physical buttons on the Kronos. And you also get the full-blown Karma engine, which is missing on the Nautilus. However, they have replaced it with something that they say is easier to understand and use. However, the Nautilus does have a significant number of improvements over the Kronos. Here's a summary. And keep in mind that the details provided to me are very vague, so this may be subject to change some corrections, in which case I'll do a follow-up video. You do get the quirky lockable knobs. You get an updated and fresh design. There are new samples and voices featuring more contemporary sounds, updated synth sounds, drum kits, and these unusual and unique sounds, phrase loops that follow the tempo, prepared pianos, and the found percussion. The Nautilus has prepared piano sounds. These are made by placing various objects like coins, rubber, wood, felt, and so on between the strings of a piano to make mysterious and cinematic sounds. The acoustic pianos have been re-recorded in new spaces and there are new controls to mix the room ambience into the sound. There's a new early Rhodes 1976 Old Tyne E piano. We have a new Dynamics knob. Turn it to the left for a softer, more delicate and expressive sound, or turn to the right for a punchy, compressed sound. The Karma function is gone, but it's been replaced with a new, more approachable polyphonic arpeggiator. The touch screen user interface has been redesigned with an easy to read dark mode, and it's been restructured also to make the most important controls easy to access, at least that's the goal of it. We have smooth sound transitions as you change presets, and perhaps this was on the Kronos as well, I'm not sure, but Korg are making a big thing of it here on the Nautilus, so I assume it's new or improved.
thank you again to Korg for sending me this so I could make the video and giving me the opportunity to participate in the launch event. It's a huge honor. And of course, thank you to you, my viewers, for all your support, for subscribing, watching my videos and engaging in the comments. Without your help, this never would have happened. Anyway, that's enough for today. Please do join me again soon for more content about the Nautilus. I hope to see you then. Cheerio.